Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is a very uh, small demonstration for the multicast lab that I that I put together the other day. I've um, just been a little bit busy, so I couldn't finish it. Um, it it's a very simple topology. It was uh, larger than this, but I had so many faults and so many issues, or at least my perception of it was that I had so many issues. I had to reduce the the complexity to something a little bit more uh, manageable. So all we have here is two CSI 1000 routers, uh, a Windows VM, Windows 7 VM, and a Linux uh, Ubuntu VM, and a bridge connection to my local Ethernet interface, which runs on my PC, which hosts all of this virtual environment anyway. Um, what to do? So here, here it, we have um, the two routers, two loopback addresses, two loopback interfaces. So what happens now is this, this man continues to rant on about this topology and doesn't really get a lot of the points across which need to be made. R1 is going to be running the bootstrap routing protocol for, uh, or at least, can, um, what do you call it, uh, methodology for multicast distribution using sparse mode. So R1 and R2 are both running sparse mode. And all of the interfaces on both of those routers right, are included so in a here, common a OSPF Area 0 server. configuration also. I'll and share all the configurations for both these routers the in the description on the video. This one's gonna be um, just so you're clear on what's going on here, because I'm not very clear when I speak on the original. There are two loopback interfaces there shown on the screen, one on each router, 1.1.1.1 uh, on R1, 2.2.2.2 on R2. Plus, every sub-interface of no both those routers so, but, uh, are included in the Area 0 OSPF, OSPF topology. Um, and what I want to make clear is that R1 Very is the bootstrap router candidate and the RP uh, all for all uh, of the multicast uh, network 224.000 okay, so slash 4. Um, and now, back to the original. This one on I've not done that yet. Uh, the R1 is already running here, and you can see I've been messing about because I had to change my local subnet on gig z uh, gig one on the diagram but gig zero zero on the router so if we just quickly look at the IP addresses on here I'm sorry for the clacking the microphone's very close to my keyboard let me see if I can move that away a little bit so we have gig zero zero with this subnet here my PC's in this subnet so if I do an IP config slash all you will see um, I have a local Ethernet connection here in this subnet, and the DHCP server I see is my router. Okay, so I just have a very small uh, uh, let me see, uh, pool of addresses here on the router. So the router is dishing out the IP to my PC, which lives which lives here. So my PC is behind this network cloud. I'm getting the DHCP from this router one. Uh, which allows me to join the network there. I can then ping 10.0.1.1. Wait, the router's 254. So I can ping the router. And uh, what else? What else? Oh, let's try. So the Windows host itself is in 192.168.6. I think 10. 11. Okay, none of those. Let me see what that one is then. So this is the Windows host. All. 11. Mm -hmm. So something's missing somewhere. Let me just try and get on R2. Why can't I uh, just have a quick look? 10.0.1.0 is there. So why couldn't I ping 11? Ah, maybe I've not got any gateway on this one. In fact, that will be it. Um, I didn't set up the gateway on this guy. So let me just okay, so again, a small mistake. And what happened is I configured the DHCP pool on R1 not to pass on a uh, default gateway to the clients. So it's not actually a huge stress. The multicast stream would still work just fine. Um, but just to prove out the end-to-end -end from the Windows PC, Windows 10 PC, to the uh, to the Windows 7 virtual machine, we're just gonna put in a, a default router object into the DHCP pool, and then we'll uh, we'll reset the network interface. Which I won't bother doing. I will just do a um, the 
disable enable let me see if I can ping that now have I got my gateway is everything good are we good are we not good yeah we're good all right so now my DHCP scope has given me a, a new uh, the same address probably um, but now I have the default route so I can ping six uh, which is the workstation right that wasn't necessary just for completeness now we're going to run um, the first uh, VM stream. So let me get both of these guys running here. So this is my Linux host. And because I'm forgetful, I made a note of the commands to, to run this thing. So VLC, and uh, my favorite movie of all time, Condor Man. Destination subnet 239 255.01 with the port equal to 5004. That can be anything. Um, Mux TS, give it a name, although that's not necessary. Time to live is very important. Um, I saw this done many ways, but this was the way that I got it to work. As long as it's more than you need to get to the edge of the net, of, uh, to get to your client, yeah, you're okay. So we've got the Linux server, time to live, decrement by one here, decrement by one here. So I only need two hops. I'm gonna put 10, I really don't care. So now I run the VLC. Uh, you can see on the timer here, it's counting across, zero, zero, five seconds, and so on and so on. So now on the Windows VM, let's load VLC, and we'll open the network stream. And I want one, two thirty nine two fifty five zero one. So this should catch that and work, which it is. So that's stream one coming from the Ubuntu box, and I should be able to flip it along the timeline on this movie, and it should change on the client. But should and come on. Wait, wait, wait. There we go. Okay, so that's the that's the easy one. The virtual machine inside the virtual machine, and everyone seems happy. And now we run on the PC itself. So now I have to run through this bridge this bridge interface here. So this is where some of the some of the configuration changed for me. So I've got a local Wi-Fi uh, card. I've also got a physical gigabit card. And I'm running VMware Workstation. So I had to do a little bit jiggery pokery first of all. Go into Edit Virtual Network Editor. There's also a shortcut probably in your startup there. And you'll notice that you've got multiple interfaces. Uh, VMNet 0, 1. Uh, well, I added, OK, I added 2 but two was one. So I replaced VMNet one with VMNet two, the host only bridged, uh, virtual bridged interface that I'm using to manage the ESA, the uh, EVNG. So you can see the EVNGs are in a 192.168.32, and that's what uh, VMNet two is, 192.168.32, okay? And then VM one I added new, and I bridged it to my physical interface down here. And VM0, I bridged it to my Wi-Fi interface down here. So I, I can then use both those interfaces in the uh, EVNG lab. If you go then to the lab and you add uh, a network, you can choose one of these uh, interfaces here. Now, Management Cloud 0 is the first physical interface you just saw, VMNet 0. Cloud 1 is VMNet 1. Cloud 2, VMNet 2, and so on. So this one is VMNet, uh, sorry, Cloud 1, which is VMNet 1. I hope you all remember that's the physical interface and now we can um, we've just check that all works so we're all good just wanted to make sure that's how I did that then uh, what to do what to do was there anything special I don't think I missed anything maybe I did I don't think so anyway uh, here's the Windows command from the CLI so again we go into uh, the VLC folder and it's VLC path of the video, movie, to, uh, to be clear, I'm trying to type really quietly because the clickiness is crazy, and then duplicate, 
I'm going to show this on the screen on the Windows machine, the host, and then you'll see the same movie playing on the... the okay, I basically uh, typed this in wrong and miss uh, some of the config, despite the fact that I had actually written it in the notepad and was reading from the notepad. So uh, this doesn't work initially, and when I hit return, VLC does a crazy loop thing. Um, I'm gonna try and spin this on, and then uh, you'll see the correct command. And again, I'll make sure that the commands are typed out correctly and added to the bottom of the video. Just check my, uh, do not miss anything, duplicate destination 2.19.5.0.2, da looks no in. Uh, minus minus s out mm, hash duplicate curly bracket ah yeah there we go so duplicate curly bracket test equal rt p curly bracket braces whatever you want to call it and then run it again here we go that's a little bit better behaved there's the video this is the one running on my pc see that a little bit of audio very nice so let's go to the Windows VM so we're still running the first video stream now let's run another one media open network stream that's exactly right I don't need to change that from my testing before I remembered it and then play and hopefully this should fingers crossed start streaming check and there we go and we can check uh, the R1 configuration so I'm running BSR I didn't even cover that so I'm running BSR I'm running a bootstrap router so um, I have PIM sparse mode on all the interfaces so IP uh, PIM interfaces and you can see that PIM's running on all those interfaces So uh, gig zero zero to the to the PC, gig zero one to the Linux VM, and gig zero uh, three to R two. Um, that is the IPM route. We can see the uh, star comma g s comma g. So star comma g from the downstream gig zero one, which is to R two. I'm saying please, please send me anyone any traffic to two thirty nine two fifty five zero two. And uh, we can see that the source for the stream 239.255.02 is 10.012, which is my PC. And we can also see that there's a request for the stream 239.255.01, again, from R2 across this interface. And we can see that the source for 239.255.01 is 192.168.210, which is the Linux host. And that's it. Um, quite, quite, quite simply done. And. Um, I got there in the end. Most of my problems, I think, were TTL. I think it was just getting that configuration right. Once I got that nailed, it was all fairly simple, um, and also a little bit of tuning on the on the VM host itself. But all good and interesting, and not at all IP uh, IGMP join group, which is boring. Good luck, everyone. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, take care.